Here we are again, guys. Today we have Shania Williams, the councilwoman for the first district. As you guys know, we are bipartisan. Partisan by accent, I cannot say. Partisan. Say Partisan. <laughs> Bipartisan. Our interest is just to educate you, to let you know where, what do they stand for, and uh, the things that they accomplished, the things that they think about accomplishing. But before we go into that, mm -hmm. let me give a shout out to the Yonkers Public Library for making this room available, yes. you know, for our interviews and our work. Yes. Shania, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me. Shania, let's get down to business. You've been a councilwoman for how long? Um, for a year and <laughs> what month are we in March? And three months. Give it and take. Yes. Yeah, for well, exactly. Well, the position that you currently have. You were not elected for the position, correct? That's not true. I was elected. You were elected. I was elected last year in November. So I was appointed in okay. January of 2018, last year. Um, that's when the seat was vacant. The mayor gets to appoint someone. I lobbied for it, and I was appointed. And I had to run in the special election, which was in November, and I was successful. Um, so here I am, an elected official. And now? We have another election coming. Yes, so this election is for the full term for the four years. Um, there's a primary and there's a general. The primary is June 25th. Um, I am running for re-election, so I hope that I will get the support of my constituents once again, and I'll continue to represent. Tell me why should I vote for you? So I, you know, I wanted to take this position on and represent this district because I've always wanted to serve my people here in Yonkers and give back to the community. I recognize that there's a lot of changes happening. There's you know, um, a lot of economic development, a lot of growth, a lot of new people coming into the city, a lot of immigrants here, um, and their voices need to be heard. Um, whenever we go through changes, whether good or bad, we have to have um, representation at the table that, rep that covers everyone, whether you're a black girl, boy, young, old, we need someone who understands what your needs and your issues are so that they can um, fully bring that to the table and work on them on your behalf. And that's what I intend on doing and that's what I've been doing for the past year. And I think I'm doing a really good job and I want to continue that. We will know if you're doing a good job mm -hmm. once election time comes. If you are elected, it's because the people believe you are doing a good job. Right. But Shania, I have to be honest. I have to ask some questions that you might like, some questions that you might not like. Okay. Not everyone agrees with you. And uh, lots of people see you there as a, for lack of a better word, a pawn of the mayor. So he can use you to pass some stuff that he wants. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be specific, term limits. Mm -hmm. Most people in your district did not agree with term limits. Now, let me just explain that. I understand what the term limits is, and so do they. Term limits does not mean that you can stay forever you want. Mm -hmm. It's an extension of term limits, still within the term limits. But the people did not support that. Mm -hmm. But you did. So you went against what the people in your district wanted. So you were not a voice to them. So that, again, is also not true. So right? tell us. So let's, let's talk about term limits. Um, the vote that I took on the council was to extend term limits from two terms to three. That means instead of an elected official possibly having the most of eight years representing their community for eight years, they can now represent the community for 12 years. And that is um, equivalent to the same amount that Westchester County legislators can represent. That is the same for New York City. And I think it makes sense to have that in the same, um, you know, line with Yonkers because it takes 10 years to master something. It takes um, time to really um, push through on the issues that you start working on. And if the community um, like what you're doing or don't like what you're doing, they don't have to wait 12 years. You know, every time that you run for a re-election, you are being term limited. The power is always with the people to vote for whomever they want every time that there is an election. So. I, you know, I voted to extend it because I believe that it's better to have longer terms, but I also believe that the people in my community, when you said that they do not support having longer terms, 
that's also not true. There's, there were some people who did support it and there were others who did not. And the reason why they did not support it was not so much that they don't think it's best to have longer terms, but it's because they felt the process was not how they preferred it. They would, they would have liked to see it as a public referendum, you know, a vote on the ballot rather than the, a vote by the council. And that was the issue. So the, the issue is the council at, ha, had the power to extend term limits, and we did, and some people didn't like that, and that's what it's about. But make no mistakes, I did not take anyone's power away by extending term limits. The power is with the people to vote, and that is their right, that is their duty, and I believe that is the right thing for them to do, and so I'm happy with the decision that I made. understand, but you said that you represent the people. You don't represent Shanae Williams. You represent the people right. of your district. That's right. what you're there for. You said you are the voice of those people. Right. And uh, the voice of those people, mm -hmm. they didn't agree with it. So, as, as always, you have a certain number that does agree, you mm -hmm. have another number that does not, mm -hmm. and then we take in consideration who is the majority. Mm -hmm. And if the majority does not agree and you represent them, then... I don't, I guess we'll um, see if the majority did not agree or not, because what happened is I had very mixed responses from people in my community some like I said agreed some people did not and so for you to say that the majority like everybody in the district did I'm not, not that's saying that not true. I did not do a study I don't right. know I'm just telling you that right. I spoke with a lot of people and I asked mm -hmm. and the majority of those who I spoke with did mm -hmm. not agree that does not mean that that's right. a scientific study right okay. now there is another big issue in your district I go around and I see a whole bunch of new construction, mm -hmm. beautiful buildings, but that is a problem. Mm -hmm. I go there and I talk to those people working in those buildings. I look around and I see the trucks bringing the material for those buildings, and they're not Yonkers people. But in the meantime, Yonkers is giving tax breaks to those constructors, but the jobs are going to elsewhere, to other people. Mm -hmm. This is your district. Right. You represent those people. You pe have people in your district that are looking for jobs. Right. Why don't you fight harder to make sure that people of Yonkers, as long as they qualify, mm -hmm. I'm not saying give a, a guy a job as an electrician just because he lives in Yonkers. Look, I guarantee you there is no one that's fighting harder for um, local uh, folks to get jobs in Yonkers on these construction sites than I am. I've, the projects that you see happening right now, those are before me. I came in at a time where those were already in the works. Now, any developer that has come before me since I've been on the council, you can ask them, I'll tell you right now, the number one thing that I always raise is whether or not they intend on hiring locally with a prevailing wage, working with our local contractors or local unions, and doing apprenticeship programs because that is how you put people to work and give them um, real sustainable jobs and real careers. And that's what I believe in. We need that for working people in Yonkers. And that is what I support and that is what I will continue to support. But you know, Shania, intent, just intent, mm -hmm. it's not enough. You actually have to follow up with intent. Okay, when the negotiations are taking place, oh, we have the intent of doing this, we have the intent of doing that, but once the deal is made, mm -hmm. the tax brackets, the breaks coming in, and let's now start, everything changes. Mm -hmm. You know about the thing that is going on with the IDA, the, the, the unions, uh, people without the union working on those construction sites, mm -hmm. and we have people from Yonkers. Look, I've, wor I've worked on um, legislation pushing the IDA to, in fact, work with local contracts like our unions to make sure that they have, uh, you know, their positions with these new um, constructions that's going up. And I will continue to do that. There's a, the city council, we cannot, we cannot force uh, private developers to hire or work with unions, but we can let them know that we will not support their project unless they work with the community, unless they work with our, our labor unions. And those are the conversations that I've been having, is what I'm saying. No, so, so when these projects come before us on the council, yes, I can't say that, you know, I can't force them to do X, Y, and Z, but I can say, if you don't do this, then I don't support this. And my vote is only one vote, but you won't have my vote if you don't work with me and work with my community. I understand, but tell me what mechanisms does the city or you have 
that if a constructor, constructor mm -hmm. does not commit to the promises he made on the negotiation table, table let's mm -hmm. say I got a tax, a tax break and everything is good, mm -hmm. but once it starts, I they forget about that. I follow. So what mechanism do you have to get that tax break that you gave because you agreed on condition mm -hmm. one, two, and three? Right. So the IDA gives tax um, tax breaks to developers to come in and you know pilot programs to build here, not the city council. However, what happens is the IDA they have something called clawbacks, and these clawbacks is for exactly what you said. If a developer does not hold up their end of the bargain and they do not in fact like hire locally like they say they're going to do, they don't you know work with um, you know our unions or they you know they don't give the community benefits that they promise. Though there are clawbacks that says they have to start paying back X, Y, and Z to the IDA, to the city. There are provisions in those contracts, um, and that's how it should be. I'm in full support of that. We should have, you know, I think the city council, if we could, um, or the, the state, or someone should have a little bit more of an oversight with the IDA because they make such huge um, deals without consenting with the city council, they should absolutely continue to have these clawbacks in place. I did not know about this, and that's a good right. thing. But perhaps you can tell us how many callbacks has it been in the last few years? Yeah, at least since you've been a right. since you've been there, how many callbacks? Well, there hasn't been any developers except for maybe one or two that I'm aware of that um, that reneged on one of the of their contracts with the city. And what happened? Um, there hasn't been that. I think one right now um, that's going through something that they basically they, they just can't afford to have their business and they can't afford to hire people the way that they said they would, so now they have to pay back the city, and that's happening right now. They're negotiating that. You know, you have a tough district, uh, Shania. It's, it's a tough one, because a lot of low-income people live in. We have uh, all this construction. People locally are not working. Since we talk about people that are not working, now let's go to the homeless. Right. That is a big problem in Yonkers. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that all the homeless that we see in Yonkers are from Yonkers. Mm -hmm. But they are here. Mm -hmm. They are in your district. They are in our city. Right. They are people in need. How do you see that? Um, it's it's a real sad thing that we have to, you know, see so many people without a home in Yonkers. Um, it breaks my heart, honestly, and that's why I started this homelessness task force because I wanted to understand for myself. There was a lot of rumors, a lot of people saying that you know these people they're not from Yonkers and they're just you know being busted in and so many different things, and it comes. It, I, I've come to learn that that's not entirely true. Um, Yonkers is the fourth largest city in the state, and you can expect to have more homeless people here simply because they, you know, whether they were born here or not, they lived here at some point. So if they're going to um, be homeless, they're going to want to come back to where they, to what they know. Um, it is our job as a city and as a county and as a state to provide for these people. A lot of the homeless people in Yonkers are actually working people. They have jobs. They, they absolutely work and they contribute to society. But the ones that you see that are you know, out on the street every day, that are you know, a nuisance to society, those are people that are sometimes they're mentally ill, they're on drugs and substance abuse. You know, they need a lot of attention. They need a lot of services that they're not currently getting right now in Yonkers for various different reasons. And that is something that's being addressed. Um, that is something that the county is aware of. Um, you know, I think the fact that we, the, the task force was able to bring certain um, issues surrounding the homeless to them, they're actively working on what they can do to, to reduce this issue. And a huge part of it is just providing homes for people. We need low income, we need more affordable housing for people in Yonkers, and we need, in order for them to, to stay in their homes, they need good jobs. So it, it really comes full circle. And my thing is, I will do everything that I can to help the homeless people. I mean, I've done clothing drives, I've done uh, food drives, I've, you know, different things. The, we do what we can to help those who are less fortunate than us. Perhaps we need to find a different uh, formula to help them. Because I think that if I go out and give them clothes, uh, give them food, I'm not really right. resolving the homeless issue. Right, so what, what needs to happen is and I've actually introduced um, resolution asking the county and the city to work together to 
put more funding into providing homes for the homeless. Um, that is that is crucial. Money is always a factor here, right? And then also, what needs to happen is we need day programs um, so that you know if you're struggling with uh, drugs and alcohol, you know that you you know you have a, a caseworker who's in the same shelter that can help you with that issue. You, you we need that. We don't have a space for that. We don't have uh, that kind of service currently in Yonkers and the county, like I said, is aware of it and they're working towards it. There is a pilot program that's going on at the sharing community right now that um, uh, the consortium is doing with Westchester Disabled on the Move and that's going along. But it's we need money and we need more um, services. But you know, touching back, going back to uh, what you just said two minutes ago, we have homeless that are working. When I have homeless that are working, that means we have a very serious problem. Why are those working people homeless? They cannot afford rent. If they cannot exactly. afford rent, why? Right. Okay, and uh, let me allow me to finish. I can give you uh, an example of somebody in your district that mm -hmm. just called us yesterday. Mm -hmm. Landlord put a paper on the, every window, every door, if I'm not mistaken, saying that uh, the building had to be vacated mm -hmm. because they were doing reconstruction inside the building. Mm -hmm. He said it was a city building. No, not a city-owned building, but the city paper, mm -hmm. notifying. The old man, which is a, a, a man by about seven years old, mm -hmm. he moved out. Mm -hmm. He said he passed by the other day and the apartment is rented. So it seems like there is some kind of a gimmick going on. We're doing reconstruction, everyone has to leave. Mm -hmm. It happens that the building is on rent control. So everybody leaves, construction is done, and they put everybody new at high rents. Mm -hmm. Who's protecting those people? Right, there's, um, you know, that's an issue, and that's new to me. I haven't heard any can complaints like that. Can take you to the that. person. And you can, they can find me, they know how to reach me, that's fine. Um, I think with that, we really have to focus on, um, our, our tenants and landlord issues. And there's a lot of uh, legislation that I know the Councilman Corazon Pineda and I in the administration we're gonna be um, bringing forth. Because we have to, even though this is something that uh, Westchester County focuses on, we have to do our part here in the city. And our building department, I can't, I'm surprised to hear that it is, uh, it was a city, official city notice that was given to this gentleman saying that Point he has to move out. Um, that's interesting. That's something that our building department have to would have to explain to me what happened there because I don't know. I can't speak to what I don't know. I would have to look into something like that. But for sure, that is something that I think is an issue in Yonkers. We have a lot of old buildings. We have a lot of um, landlords, a lot of slumlords who take advantage of people and who do things to push people out of their homes because they want to rent it out to someone else and, and raise the price. And that's not that's not the way that we should be doing things here in Yonkers. And that way of that practice, that lifestyle has to change and it has to stop right now. So Shania, for our audience, if I go into my building today and I see a, a sticker there saying I need to move, move out by next week, mm -hmm. place has been renovated, fixed or whatever, mm -hmm. what is the first thing I should do? Should I just leave? Or should I call somebody to find out if they, that look, is... They can call my office and we will look into it. We will um, connect them with the right folks. Um, if they need, you know, if they have to get a, a lawyer or something that we have, different organizations that we work with, different, um, you know, nonprofits, we can certainly look into it and try to be helpful there. You know, I'm not promising that we're going to save the day, but we certainly will do try our, our best. best. Now, I have to tell you, something else you know I, as you know I go around I film here I film there and I broadcast the other day I received a little drawing you ever heard about that game where in the world is Carmen no it's a, it's an old game and somebody sent me one says where in the world is Shanae Williams because people are saying Shanae that they don't see you and they need to see you on their neighborhood mm -hmm. on their area you were voted to represent them Mm -hmm. I'm sure that you have uh, lots of things to do and sometimes people don't know mm -hmm. they think that your job is just walk around mm -hmm. so can you explain to to our audience what you do why you cannot be at every place when it's needed but you are actually working for the for the people yes so this the city council position that I hold it's a part-time position even though we act uh, like it is a full-time position I try to be everywhere but I'm one person 
um, if I'm invited to an event, if I'm invited to um, you know, speak somewhere, I will show up. If I go to community meetings every month um, within my community as much as I can, even though I also have a full-time job that I have to work you know, nine to six, but I still make time. I'm, I'm all over the district, which is surprising to me that, that, um, that folks are asking where I am. But also, if they really want to reach me, my office is open five days a week, Monday through Friday, nine to five. Um, and, and I actually, every Wednesday, I have been at Paxos from seven to nine a.m. just sitting down, having coffee or tea. If you want, you can always come and, and I hope that you come and talk to me there about anything. So I am available. I, you know, if you are part of any uh, community uh, group in Yonkers, I'm pretty sure that you know who I am because I'm also involved in those groups or I attend their meetings and events. So, yeah. So, guys, in all fairness, what the, the councilwoman is saying is true. You know, they have, as she said, it's a part-time job. That means they don't have the time to go everywhere, every place. But you are only a phone call away right. from Shania. If and you, I'd say I have the easiest phone number to remember. What is it? 277-6311. Can't forget it. That's it. You can't forget that one. And you cannot forget Councilwoman. So if you have an issue and you need her to address, call her. Remember, she cannot read your mind. She cannot know about all the issues in Yonkers. Maybe her, the resolution is not the one that you hope for, but she can try to find a, a, you know, a resolve for that problem. Hopefully, it will be what she wants, but she will address it. Mm -hmm. right. That's everything in life. I don't get everything I want. But you can try. I, I can try. And if there is an issue, call her. Call her, talk about the issue, explain the problem, and she will be get back to you. Now, what about your signatures? How is that going, Shania? Are petitions? You? The petitions. How is <laughs> that going? It's going great. I'm doing well. I'm excited about it. I knock on a lot of doors, uh, thousands of doors so far. and. I'm meeting a lot of people and you know a lot of people remember me from last year because again I, I just did this a few months ago um, but are they signing it and they're signing it yes they are I haven't That's had um, I haven't had anyone that I've knocked on their door and they say no that to me to my face or anything like that so I think that's a positive thing. A lot of people give really positive reinforcement that they like what I've done so far. Look, I've been here less than two years and I'm acting. I, I, I don't want to play games. I'm not here to play games. I'm here to represent a group of people who trusted me to elect me into this position and that's what I, I will continue to do. Now, when you were appointed and then when you were elected, mm -hmm. you made cer certain promises to the, to the people of your district. Mm -hmm. I promise, I promise to fight for education, which I have done and I will continue to do. That is a, one of my number one priorities about here. The accomplishments. Um, what have you actually accomplished? So people well, can... What have I accomplished? Last year, we passed a budget. Um, we had, first of all, it was a very difficult budget and we had to raise taxes 6.3%, which I'm not proud of, but it was a necessity something that we had to do on the council because we recognized that we were going to have to lay off hundreds of people. We passed a budget that did, that called for zero layoffs, 400 jobs saved because we raised taxes, because of our, our, our $8.8 .8, um, million from the state, which we're thankful for, but it, it wasn't going to close the gap on its own. Um, we had to get rid of vacancies. We did so much um, to make sure that that budget was something that was meaningful and affected everyone and certainly a lot of people in my district um, saved a lot of jobs and I'm proud of that. That is something that we were able to deliver on. And this year, I mean, we, we're having conversations with the state delegation. We're going to Albany next week to fight for more funding for our students. There's a lot happening. And Shania, I'm, but let's, let's go back to that budget crisis. Okay. A lot of people are proud. A lot of people are not so proud. Mm. Okay? No one likes taxes to go up, especially when promises were made just before taxes will not go up. Well, taxes did go up. Uh, I never made such promises. You know, I'm but, talking in general, but, but I, you I, know I, about I, those promises, correct? Or you don't I, know nothing about who, them? I don't know who made those promises. No one promised me that they weren't going to raise taxes. You need to check the records. I could tell, tell you names, but I, I don't want to bring these up. But a lot of council people mm -hmm. said that there were going to be no taxes increases in Yonkers. Well, I wasn't one of those. I don't like I'm to make promises that I can't keep. But, I don't believe in that. But, th but that's not my point. Mm -hmm. My point is, 
when we went to Albany, mm -hmm. Albany said this is going to be a one-shot deal. Right. Well, I have a feeling that we are going to be on the same position mm -hmm. as we were last year. Right. If, I mean, if you've been following our budget um, committee meetings so far, you'll hear, you'll see that we have a problem in our Board of Education. We have a huge deficit already, close to $60 million that we're trying to figure out how we're gonna close that gap this year. And it's frustrating because we can't, we can't um, just say that we're gonna just go to the state again and ask for a handout because that doesn't work. But we're working on it. Um, we're, you know, we have an auditor that was never there before that we've uh, uh, created a position for for the Board of Education so that the City Council can have more insight and understanding and try to figure out a new strategy, a new plan so that we can um, you know, be more efficient and find a way to, to, to make it work this year. So we're working on that. Aren't we a little bit too late? Because when is the budget gonna be coming up? I, the, look, I, I don't believe in ever being too late. No? I, I don't. Um, I have this saying in my head that my grandmother and my mom says all the time. It's, you're better late than, than, than never. never. So I, I don't believe it's, it's too late. So maybe next year, whatever we're going to do this year will help us next year. But hopefully, the thing is, what's going to happen do, this year? Hopefully whatever happens this year will be something that transcends for not just next year, but years to come. We need to find a solution that is a stable and sustainable solution for education. Um, you know, our schools are crumbling. We, we can't ignore that. And the state can't ignore that. It is all, it is, Let's not forget that it is their responsibility to provide good quality education for inner cities like Yonkers, right? Um, it's 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 baffling to me that we 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 have to continue to fight and fight and fight for something that should be given. It is our right. It, our kids deserve to have this right to have good education, to have counselors and and and, and teachers. And to have you know guidance uh, guidance counselors and psychologists to have administrators to help them to, so that they can be the most successful children when we send them out into the world. Now, but we have some good news, right? Have you heard that uh, Mayor Spano is uh, thinking about building what three new schools, four new schools? Well, yes, that's been the plan for some years now with the Rebuild Yonkers campaign, um, and there's two of those schools will be in my district, um, provided that everything goes according to plan, but yes, that is now, exciting. Now, Shania, what are the, the most important issues in your district at this time that you are working on? It's the same issues that I was talking about last year and that I mentioned before. It's, That's okay. um, it's housing, it's um, real affordable housing, it's uh, the, the homeless issue, it is, just quality of life issues, cleaning up the streets, these vacant lots and vacant buildings, and you know, making sure that our tenants have heat and hot water, especially in the winter. Those types of things. We have to um, really start looking at things from a different lens and start um, changing the narrative and, and changing the way that we approach government and the way that we approach the community and start actually working for the people. Well. We've been here for about 30 minutes. Now, thank you for all this, for sitting with us. But now, uh, tell the audience why they should vote for you, what your plans are, and how important it is to come out and actually vote. Because we might sit behind our computer, we might complain about this, we might complain about that, but unless people come out and vote, mm -hmm. we will not make changes. If they're happy with what you have done, they need to come out and vote for you. Right. Okay. So I would love for you all to come and support me and vote for me June 25th because I am the elected official that's here fighting for you now and I will continue to fight for you. I will continue to, to fight for good quality education. I will continue to fight for more funding for our students. I will continue to fight so, to make sure that we clean up this uh, district, that we have um, jobs and opportunities not just jobs but opportunities to build true careers in Yonkers um, I will continue to advocate for you in every level in anything that you bring to my attention 
trust and believe I will not ignore it. I will do everything I can. And if there's something that I cannot do, I will let you know. Because I believe in just being authentic and being honest with people. That's how I was raised. That is what I believe in. And I think that is what the, you, the people, deserve. You have a partner here who believes in working hard for hardworking people. And that is why I, I'm running for re-election. And I hope that you will come out and vote for me. And as Ben said, the importance of voting is, is, is just so... I, I can't even put it into words. A lot of people that I've seen on the street, they said, no, they're not gonna vote. They don't believe in, in government. And that is really unfortunate, but I get it. I get that it hasn't been working for so long, but it is time for change. And it starts with, with us. It starts on the local level. It starts with the youth. And I am one of those people that want to be that agent of change for you. So vote for me, support me, and we can do it together. Thank you. Shania, as I always end up, is there anything that uh, I should have asked you but I didn't? I don't know, Ben. Let's let's go, um, let's see. I guess I think you covered all of the major topics. I covered um, everything. Yeah. Did I, I do mean, a good job? I think you're. I think you're all right. I think you did a good job. Right. <laughs> um, you're all right. That's it. I think. I think you're all right. Uh, <laughs> just all right. <laughs> No, Ben, ben is great. Thank you, thank you to the Yonkers Boys Central for, for interviewing me and for giving me some time to talk to you guys. And I hope that you can come out and um, have tea or coffee with me in the mornings, 7 to 9 a.m. every Wednesday tomorrow at Paxos. I'll be there. If you don't know where Paxos is, it's at um, Main Street, 24 Main Street. I'll be there. Every hope Wednesday? There. Every Wednesday morning. So, guys, I don't get it. Some of you are saying that you don't know her, you don't see her, but every Wednesday, 7 to 9, right. she's there for breakfast with the people of her district. So all you need to do is show up. Complain less, you know, act more, show up, be involved, and talk to your councilwoman. Express your issues and see what can she do about them. There is no guarantees that everything will be solved in the way you wish, but she can address and try to solve it in the best possible way. So thank you guys for watching. Yonka's voice is always on, on top of things, making sure that you know what's going on. And our only interest is to inform you so you can make an educated decision about who deserves your vote. Take care.